This is an AJ Duggar exclusive. I cannot sleep alone at night. My baby left me here tonight. I cannot cope till it's alright. You ain't doing it, you bitches. You you're my baby. All right, everybody, this is A.J. Duggar talking to Pearl Jr., and um, I got to say, Pearl, can you kind of introduce yourself to the world and let everybody know what you've been up to? Well, I'm Pearl Jr. I'm an author and activist and documentary filmmaker, and uh, we produce documentaries on Barack Obama and Michael Jackson, and I guess now I'm, I'm a certified Michael Jacksonologist. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, when I first announced that I was going to interview you, a lot of people said, Lord Jesus, Age, are you going to interview that crazy woman? Like, <laughs> like, what's your response to people that don't believe when they first hear that, that you say Michael Jackson faked his death? Um, um, when they say that I'm crazy or they think it's a, a, a ludicrous thought, it's just because they don't know what I know. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's a matter of if they knew what I knew, they think the same thing. Right. Okay, and you're a journalist like I am, and I respect the research you've done and the interviews that you've done. I guess I'm going to start from the top. So June 25th, 2009, where were you and what was your reaction to the news? Well, I was the first one in the world to tweet that um, an ambulance was at Carrollwood, at the Carrollwood address. I, I go back, let me just give a little bit of background. I was credentialed media back in the 2005 trial of Michael Jackson and, and know the fact that he was innocent. And, and, and anybody out there, if they were a member of the jury, they would have found him innocent on all 14 counts as well because there was just no evidence there whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and since 2005, I've been involved in the Michael Jackson world and have learned so much about him. Um, and then I also covered the Conrad Murray trial. So I'm someone who is very, very knowledgeable. We produce uh, four Michael documentaries, two on the 2005 trial, one is an updated one, and then we co-produced one that was distributed in Europe, and then we produced uh, the Alive, Is Michael Jackson Really Dead documentary. And um, um, so therefore, uh, I, I know a lot, but what I was doing in 2009 was I knew the girl who sold maps outside of his house, and it, coincidentally, um, uh, I knew her from the 2005 trial, and she was a Michael fan, and I also was the person who told the world that Michael was moving to Carrollwood back in October 2008. I knew that he was moving to Carrollwood soon because my friend sold masks outside the house. So what I was doing, so five minutes after the ambulance went inside of Carrollwood on June 25, 2009, I got a phone call telling me, that an ambulance was at Michael's house, and I had no idea why. I had no idea. Maybe the gardener had cut himself or something. I, I didn't know why. But all I knew is I had to get dressed, and I had to head out and head over there. And so before I left the house, I tweeted it at 12.43, and the whole nobody knew. And I, I was on my way to Carrollwood, and I got a phone call stating I called, left a message for Joe. I called, left a message for Randy Jackson. And then I uh, headed over there, and then I got a phone call saying the ambulance just left. It was around 1 o'clock, and to go over to UCLA. So I went directly to UCLA, and there was just one fan there. Nobody knew. And the two SUVs were there. One of them still had on its blinking lights. So I spent the whole day at UCLA on June 25, 2009. And I believed that Michael Jackson had died that day. I've seen you in pictures with Jermaine Jackson and Joe Jackson and lots of other people from Michael's family in Inner Circle. Who have you interviewed while you're researching for your projects? Well, most of the fans. <laughs> I interviewed mostly the fans, and it's mostly research. I didn't believe in the death hoax until eight months after, um, after the announcement. Uh, you know, I was ready to mourn. I cried every day thinking that Michael Jackson had died. Um, I was so involved, and he became just the my Michael activities that became such an integral part of my daily life that I was devastated, and I really believed he was dead. And then the fans, since I was one of the few journalists 
that the fans trusted during the 2005 trial, a lot of fans were throwing me all these clues and telling me that he wasn't dead and all this stuff, and I made excuse after excuse after excuse uh, to say, no, it's not, if you guys are fantasizing, he's mm. dead, you know, get over it. So I understand people who get annoyed by the thought that Michael's, that Michael's not dead because it happened to me. And what happened was eventually the clues just backed up, you know, to, you know, the dozens and dozens of clues, like, for example, the ambulance photo, which was supposedly the late ambulance, the, the, the last photo of Michael, mm -hmm. that's fake. And it's proven by even the Jackson family attorney that it's fake. Um, you know, Michael's real name is Michael Joe Jackson, but uh, all the death documents have Michael Joseph Jackson. Even today, there's still no name on that hidden, tucked away grave. You know, so, and then there was a book published the day before on Amazon and on Goodreads.com on June 24th called The Mysterious Death of Michael Jackson. So there are just a myriad of clues that tell me that Michael Jackson did not die. Also, when you go on Forest Lawn's website and you enter in Michael Jackson's burial location information, it says no internment data is available. And when I called uh, the same month, I think it was September, October of uh, the burial, the same month of the burial that they had, that was televised, I asked fourth line, you know, where is Michael buried? And they said, we don't have Michael's body and we've never had it. Wow. That's deep. That's really interesting. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> um, I remember you were talking about some of this stuff in your documentary about how the book, like for instance, the book was published saying that Michael was dead the day before it happened. I, I looked that up. That's really interesting. Um, and it's true. Yeah. <laughs> now... <laughs> Oh, okay. Michael Jackson, Michael's longtime producer, Teddy Riley, he said that Michael is alive. Who else shares the belief that Michael is alive? That, uh, other than the uh, fans? Akon. Akon. Teddy okay. Riley and Akon, they have voiced their opinions that Michael Jackson could be alive or they're wishing that Michael is alive. And, but, you see, since the big media has not, uh, you know, basically, for me, they're doing it on purpose because, any time that a big celebrity like Michael, the biggest celebrity in the world, doesn't have a name on his grave, that should be instant worldwide news. I mean, especially near three years later. I mean, come on. Uh, and, and the media is perfect. And I, and I, I email the media. They're part of my media list. They open all my, me all my emails, and they just have decided to be quiet about it at this particular time. So... Uh, Right now, you know, the public may think at first thought, because the first thing you think of, oh, yeah, Elvis, yeah, Tupac, yeah, Jim Morrison, sure, you know, and they think of the death hoax and all these people didn't come back, you know, so they immediately, when you say Michael Jackson's not dead, they instantly go to the Elvis death hoax, and since Elvis never returned, they think that it's ridiculous to believe in a Michael Jackson death hoax. This is the million-dollar question. You know, Michael Jackson was about to... He was about to do that big tour with This Is It and get everything straight and, you know, shock the world again. But at that point, why would Michael Jackson fake his death? Because it's all a part of the plan. Um, if you look up This Is It, I mean, some people may find this quite, you know, Jermaine says there's no such thing as coincidences, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the day, be the day before, 12 hours before Michael finishes enough footage, for the movie, this is it, right? That he dies the next day, right after he has enough, coincidentally, right? It was all, it, then we found out through court uh, papers, and also I had already known this, but there were eight to ten cameras in there filming this is it, okay? So we're talking about a huge production. Um, Frank Delio, he, he since has died, but he said that, um, that Michael just had two $3,000 cameras, but if you look at one of the publicity shots, in which Michael had wrote, I love you, see you July 2011. Um, he had wrote on that and released that picture in May 2009. He's looking through a camera, and that's a red camera, and that's a $20,000 camera. And that's not even with the accessories that it takes. So, so this is it. has been proven that it had 10 cameras in there. We're talking about, you know, close-ups, front, stage left, stage right, aerial photos, 
rolling cameras, padding. We had cameras everywhere filming it. Why do that, okay? I mean, come on. I mean, and then you find out that AED owner, Philip Anschutz, he owns more movie theaters in the world than anyone else. So, come on. And then the opening of This Is Dead premiered at the opening of an L.A. Live theater, which is right across the street from Staples Center called the Regal Theater. So, I mean, it's just it just becomes ridiculous. It's so well planned. And then in March 2009, right, um, on March 5th, he did the press conference announcing this is it in his tour. Uh, two days before that, there was an article saying when saying Michael wants all his unreleased albums released before he dies. I mean, it's just it's just it, it's come on. <laughs> Yeah, this is very insightful. Okay, and let me ask you this. So if Michael faked his death, is his family in on it, or is he keeping them in the dark as well? Well, I would, I, you know, I don't know, and I don't want to say who knows and who doesn't know, but whoever in the family that didn't know, they probably know now, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, how, when I, when, when the verdict, the, the Conrad Murray trial, I mean, I walked in there, and I'm, I, I have a credential press just like all the big media, CBS, CNN. I have the same media access as they do, which I find, you know, rather like an angel gave that to me, okay? Mm-hmm. And the first day, here they are with Michael Joseph Jackson. And I, I looked over at Catherine, I looked over at Joe, I looked over at Jermaine, who confirmed, who all have confirmed Michael's middle name is Joe. And I'm like, come on, guys, let's get his name right. And then if you listen to the verdict, the Conrad Murray trial verdict, it says Dr. Conrad Murray has been found guilty of the involuntary manslaughter of the alleged victim, Michael Joseph Jackson, on the alleged date, June 25th, 2009. I mean, how are you gonna have verdict and alleged in the same sentence? I mean, it's just it's, it's just it's just absurd. Yeah, and tell me something about this too. I think you were talking about this a long time ago. There was a person dressed as an old man at Michael's memorial. Uh, a lot of people were saying that that was Michael. Do you have any knowledge on that? I I don't know if the old man is Michael or not. I I I don't know. I leave that up in the air. But Michael is excellent at disguises and and the story that Marlon told on stage just proved it when Marlon said talked about Michael in a record store and, and he was like Marlon was like is that you Michael Michael's like how'd you know and, <laughs> and, and you know so uh, Marlon was telling us right then and there that Michael loves disguises and you know so he could have been there I don't know if he was that old man or not I know that Michael is excellent at disguises and if he doesn't want to be seen he knows how because Michael spent a lot of time with the greatest magicians in the world and magicians aren't anything but masters of distractions and Michael his whole life was filled with you know pretend like you're going stage left but really go stage right so that the screaming girls wouldn't you know tear the Jacksons to pieces and then in the court case Kenny Ortega says that Michael says on June 24th 2009 Michael tells him the illusion starts tomorrow. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's yes. Fu- it's funny you mentioned it, because my next question was about the trial. So what did you think of the trial in general? Well, you know, the Conrad Murray trial, There's, I did a video on the top seven reasons why why the trial was fake, and you can go to my website, michaeljacksoninsider.com, and you'll find that it's connected to the Michael album, because on the Michael album, the lip says, I live, and then the seal that was up the whole time is the, the California seal that they use for movies in theaters. And uh, it has 32 stars, and the official California uh, seal has 31 stars because California is the 31st state that um, was inducted into the United States of America. And then you'll see that the background, the black and the gold stripe, is a part of the Michael album, a part of his suit, too. And then you'll find that extra star there, too. I mean, it's very elaborate. I mean, it's just, it's, it's been just this fabulous adventure. You know, um, and unless you're in the know, people would think you're crazy. Mm-hmm. But Michael is a genius beyond measure. And 
you know, and he had every reason. I, I believe that Michael started planning to fake his death decades ago. And I think that he was really planning it during the Invincible era because there's a lot of, he would have been the same age as Elvis when Elvis had uh, had died or disappeared, whichever way you want to believe. I'm not into death hoaxes. I'm into Michael Jackson. So, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and so the Michael Jackson death hoax is something that's interesting. So I, you know, do that as a part of my Michael Jackson my Michaeling, <laughs> um, but um, also with Lisa Marie Presley saying that, you know, play after play after play is, is identical to her dad's, and we just so happen to own the book, Is Elvis Alive? And when I read that book, I mean, it was exactly like Michael followed that book to a T. You know, it's like I threw the book across the room because I was like, no way, no way, no way, no way. You know, is all this exactly like Michael? So uh, there's, there's, there's so much proof if you just look that Michael faked his death. Hmm. What did you think of the autopsy pictures? First of all, it was, it, it, they can't be real. I mean, I'm in the courtroom. So I'm, I'm not someone on television. I'm in the courtroom. Right. And I'm looking, and, and they're using his death picture as like a backdrop, and they're writing his name over it and all this stuff. It's like, wait a minute, what about the sensitivity here, you know? So that told me right there that it's, it, it's faked. And also, if you look at the other one, there's two of them, and you look at the neck, okay, it's all smooth in the neck, and that's when they placed his head on there, you know? So it, 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 those pictures are photoshopped, you know, whether Michael laid down and said cheese, but he didn't say cheese, but whether <laughs> Michael laid down for them or not, but they're photoshopped pictures, and I don't believe that they're real. Also, I think that there was a, um, a documentary called Michael Jackson's Autopsy that the estate apparently stopped from being produced. And uh, I think that was to tell us that the autopsy pictures are fake because we have these autopsy these pictures of Michael from that movie, you know, and the movie, the documentary never aired, so was that a clue to the fans? And I think Michael leaves all these clues for his most dedicated fans who know everything about Michael. They follow Michael. Oh, my God, they know so much about Michael. They're very astute. And they double check everything. So I think Michael leaves all these clues so that his most dedicated fans would know that he's okay. Mhm. That's interesting. I remember that it was the wrong date on one of the autopsy pictures as well. I think it said June twenty fourth or something like that. No, there was a picture. Well, they used a font that was very ambiguous, and the font said eight twenty five two thousand and nine. But what happened on eight twenty five? was uh, the day that they uh, uh, cornered, somebody released a corner fan uh, with something, a shadowy figure. Not a sh- it wasn't a shadow. It was kind of like a, um, a darkened figure that looked like Michael Jackson and Dr. Conrad Murray coming outside of the, uh, of, of the corner fan. Now, the ironic thing about this, I did a video on it, and my coverage of the trial is all on my website, michaeljacksoninsider.com, but on my way to court from a, from the lunch break, I see that same, you know, coroner's van. It was just crazy. And then I see, then um, also I see this big sign that says um, about the elephant in the room, because there was an elephant in the courtroom. You know, and, you know, the cliche elephant in the room is we all know something's wrong here, but ain't nobody saying nothing. (laughs) You know, so, and then it said we're all elephants in the circus. So, I mean, there's, it's just so much. It's so much. That's interesting. I'm not going to hold you too much long. I have a few more questions. Okay, I remember in one of your videos you mentioned Jason Malachi, who was a popular Michael Jackson sound-alike. How does he tie into the conspiracy? Well, uh, Jason Malachi came out in like 2006, 2007, and he had a series of songs, Mama Cita, Let Me Let Go, and they sound like Michael, and a lot of fans thought they were Michael. Um, I, you know, they could have been Michael. Now, Jason Malachi, if you take all the letters of Jason Malachi, they all come from the name Michael Jackson, and Malachi means messenger. So I think Michael had this idea that um, maybe it would help record sales if people wanted to, you know, play, is this Michael's voice or isn't this Michael's voice? 
And um, I believe it's all Michael, but I think it's Michael playing games with his voice, which, you know, if you grew up in a studio and with audio equipment your whole life, oh, you can manipulate some sound. Mm -hmm. You know, you can manipulate <laughs> recordings, and that's, that's certain. So he was a master not only of disguise, but a master at, you know, disguising his voice and everything. So Jason Malachi is a real person, but I was invited to see Jason Malachi sing in Las Vegas at the Jet Hotel in the Mirage. I think it was 2007, and I couldn't make it for a series of reasons. And I wrote a book called Suicide, which is spelled P-S-E-U-D-O-C-I-D-E, -E, Did Michael Jackson Fake His Death to Save His Life? And you can find out information of that on michaeljacksoninsider.com. And I tell the story about what happened when I was supposed to go see Jason Malachi, but it turned out that he lip sang those songs and he did not sing them live. So uh, was Jason Malachi hired as some kind of uh, publicity stunt? I remember Will I Am was saying that Michael was going to start using MySpace and Facebook and social networking to promote his new music, and then Jason Malachi popped up. <laughs> Well, that's very true. There's another voice imp imposter or somebody. I, I don't know if it's an imposter or not, but his name is Peter Pan CYT, and he sounds a lot like Michael. And um, so that, that, that's kind of like where it's at right now is Peter Pan PYT on MySpace. Is he Michael Jackson or isn't he? And like I said, if you want to know, you know, all these interesting stories about him, you can go to my uh website michaeljacksoninsider.com okay and i'm going to ask you this question here this isn't about the host i'm just asking you this as a fan i'm pretty sure that you've heard the the michael album and um, yes. do you think it's really michael's vocals or do you think we've been fooled on, on, on the three cassio songs well a lot of the songs are definitely michael's vocals um most of the songs are there's just three songs that are in question breaking news keep your head up and monster um, yeah, but the breaking news one, which was released as a snippet at first, a little snippet, snippet of a song, mm -hmm. and um, and if you listen to it in the beginning, it's really uh, "Flight of the Bumblebee," which is a a, a Sony owned song, Sony classic owned classical song, and "Flight of the Bumblebee" is from this play called uh, "Tales of the Czar Sultan." And with that, during this part of the play, it's about a son trying to prove that he was alive, trying to tell his dad that he was alive. So, <laughs> I mean, the clothes just mount up. I mean, they're, you know, the documentary ends December 2010, and the Suicide E-Movie book ends May 2010. But I am prepared to, hopefully, if God willing, I'll be able to write Suicide 2 and produce a live 2 because there's still a lot, a lot of clues that, are, that haven't been put in either one because only it's a time issue. But uh, other than those three songs, the rest of them are definitely the voice of Michael Jackson. And I believe the other three songs are just manipulations of Michael's voice to make people wonder if it's Michael or isn't it Michael. What is Michael Jackson doing now, and when can we expect to see him again? Michael Jackson is probably listening right now, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke, I'm sorry. Um, but um, uh, um, he is somewhere probably playing Secret Millionaire. There was this show called Secret Millionaire where millionaires would go in hiding and they would pretend like they were poor people and they would, um, you know, work odd jobs and, and do whatever, and then they would, you know, donate money. Like, Michael wants to build a children's hospital, and hopefully he'll be able to do that. But um, he's probably on the Internet pretending like he's someone else, and, and he's, you know, and I could imagine that he probably, when he goes out as a normal person, he, and he probably puts on some kind of light disguise. And people probably say to him, oh, you look just like Michael Jackson. And he probably says, oh, I hear that all the time and moves on <laughs> in life. Who knows? You know, but he's probably living a very normal life right now. And, and for once in his life, he's probably um, able to walk outside, you know, and go to the store and do things normal people do, which is something he never had a chance to do. That is my guess. Interesting. 
And I know you've written a book and you've got a documentary about the Michael Jackson death hoax. Where are these products available? They're available on Netflix. Alive is Michael Jackson Really Dead is available on Netflix. And also you can get bonus footage if you buy the documentary. Alive is Michael Jackson Really Dead on Amazon.com. And then the suicide, which is spelled, I'll spell it again because it's a word that means someone who faked their death, but it's not like a really popular word. Mm -hmm. It starts with a T. Okay, T is in Pearl, Pearl Jr. T S E U D O C I D E. Did Michael Jackson who decide? Did Michael Jackson fake his death to save his life? And that can be found on Amazon. But for all this stuff, you can just go to my website, MichaelJacksonInsider.com. Okay. One last question. What, what's sure. Ne- what's next in your future? What are things we can expect from Pearl Jr. in the coming years? You know, I don't know um, what the future will bring. I remember writing Michael a letter, you know, and telling him I don't know what the future will bring, and there was a lot of me and Michael future still ahead. So we'll see what happens. You know, I kind of go with the flow, and, you know, God has placed me in so many different situations with Michael Jackson, and I guess, you know, we'll see what God or fate, depending on your belief system, uh, brings, and we'll see what happens. But Michael did say, and, and this is it, uh, we got four years to get it right, and four years would be 2013 or the end of 2012. So, you know, we'll see what happens. This is an A.J. Duggar exclusive.